Hello chaps, it's Commodore Graham here. Welcome to a quick follow-up video to uh, this one here, the one about OBS version 18 and uh, the new features it adds for on-the-fly audio processing. Uh, I've done a bit of tinkering with my settings and come up with something that I'm kind of happier with. So I thought I would just share those settings with you quickly. Now, uh, th there are a few things that I've changed here. One, if I go into the filters for my microphone audio, I have stopped using OBS's built-in compressor because I, I don't trust it not to clip the audio a little bit. Um, and I've, uh, I I'm using the VST support that OBS Studio now has to run this compression plugin instead. Uh, it's called Recomp. It's uh, it's part of a free suite of VST plugins that I'll uh, I'll show you in a moment. There'll be a link in the description and all that. Uh, as you can see, I have the threshold where it starts compressing set at minus thirty decibels. So whenever my voice gets above this level here, I get some compression. You can see here how much compression I'm getting. It's sort of uh, going in between, I don't know, about like 6 and 12 decibels. And here is the output volume that I'm getting. Ooh, got a little bit of clipping there, but it hardly ever happens. So worry not. Now then, uh, I have the uh, compression ratio set at 2.5 to 1. That means that anything that goes above this level gets its volume level squashed by a factor of 2.5. And then I have this auto makeup uh, box here checked. And what this does is it automatically compensates for the volume that I've lost by uh, using the compression. So that's what raises the overall average volume of the audio, uh, in case you're not particularly um, familiar with this sort of thing. Um, there's the anti-aliasing here. Uh, you may get a better um, you may get a better result by putting anti-aliasing on. Uh, it will use more CPU resources and you get a pretty good result without it. So usually I don't bother. Um, that aside, I also have... Um, I, I'm act I actually am still using the built-in... Um, uh, the built-in compressor as a limiter. Uh, so that so that the volume level doesn't get too high because I'll be having other sounds as well, like, you know, sounds from a game that I'm recording or something. And uh, I don't want the two things when added together to give me problems. So uh, I set the threshold for that uh, compressor at minus six decibels. So I've chopped off quite a lot of the top by a, like a high ratio, that's what makes it a limiter, a ratio of 10 to 1. And uh, I've compensated slightly by giving it um, 2.5 decibels of output gain. So what that means is that my peak levels coming out of this limiter should be about minus 3 decibels, something like that. Uh, and also I've turned down the actual mixer volume in OBS by about a decibel just to give me an extra little bit of leeway because losing one decibel is nothing. Um, it hardly affects the, the perceived volume at all, but it does give extra protection against audio clipping, uh, against distortion. When it comes to the desktop audio, which would be like the sounds from a, whichever game I'm recording or whatever, uh, I've done the same thing here. Both of them are, are down by about a decibel. But with the desktop audio, all I've done is apply a limiter. The, the, this is actually, again, just uh, OBS's built-in compressor, but used as a limiter, with a ratio, again, of 10 to 1 and a threshold, again, of minus 6 decibels. But I'm not applying any, you know, output gain to it. I'm just limiting the audio and that's it. So my thinking is that if this audio is limited to minus six decibels and um, my mic audio is limited to about minus three or so, and everything's got a little bit of headroom, like about a decibel away from the limit, then 
at the cost of very little actual perceived volume, uh, I should get considerably better quality due to it not distorting. Uh, oh, I should point out here, I do have um, another instance for my desktop audio of uh, this, this uh, Recomp compressor with uh, different settings as you can hear, see here, the threshold is different. Uh, that's just for if I'm doing a, a cooperative Let's Play video with someone else. Uh, I've found that uh, um, they, they tend to need some sort of compression as well in order to raise their levels a little, but not quite as much as my actual mic, because I think that Discord, for instance, automatically puts in like a little bit extra gain so uh so you don't need to beef it up quite as much with the compressor but anyway the thing that mattered the most was um uh the settings that i've put on my mic um so oh uh, i should point out uh you know the 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 mic audio that you're hearing now my voice this is using exactly these settings, obviously. So if you like how this sounds, then then hooray, you can try using the same settings. Uh, another thing that's important is to make sure your mic itself isn't distorting. So I have uh, my mic, which is uh, a Blue Yeti, set to about um, 8 o'clock uh, on the gain knob, and it's set to cardioid mode because... Um, you know, I want to isolate my voice as much as possible from echoes and so forth. And my mouth is about six or eight inches away from the microphone, generally speaking. So that that pretty much covers my uh, kind of like entire setup, my entire stack there. So as long as your mic isn't distorting, you you should be able to get comparable results to mine as long as your mic is okay quality at least oh and the other thing that i should mention although this hasn't really changed so much from last time i'm still using the noise suppression um here it's uh, i i've i've set it to full really because it doesn't really seem to make my mic sound worse when i do and it means that less noise gets through which of course is good um the noise gate I have that set to close at minus 42 decibels and open at minus 36 decibels. So as long as my voice is above minus 36 decibels, which it basically always is, then then you're fine. Uh, I, I believe I adjusted the settings for the hold time and the release time to 50 milliseconds each. I don't think this is the default. But anyway, yes. And it's very important, of course, that you apply them in the right order. Noise suppression comes first, then the noise gate to get rid of the rest, then the compressor, and then the limiter. And I'll just um, quickly show you where to find OBS. It's just here. I'll put the link in the description. Oh, the other thing that I should mention, actually, before I forget, is that... Uh, since I'm using the 64-bit version of OBS, as you can see here, you need to use the 64-bit version of uh, these plugins. So um, the, the, these are by Reaper, who also make a digital audio workstation for um, you know recording music and stuff like that. Um, but you can get these plugins for free. You can install both of them, actually, the 32-bit and 64-bit, but make sure you, you install the 64-bit if you're using 64-bit OBS, because otherwise OBS will not recognize them and you won't be able to use them. So, um, you know, there, there are a few other plug plugins in here, but I only use the compressor. So um, that's essentially it. I'll put this link in the description. Also this link, a link to the, the, the video to which this is a follow-up and any other information that I think might be uh, vital for you to know. Anyway. Um, hope that was informative. If it was, do please click the like button. It helps out rather a lot. Share this video with anyone you think that it might help as well. Uh, leave your thoughts and suggestions and feedback in the comment section below and subscribe if, but only if, you'd like to see more. Ta-ta for now, chaps.